The devil whispered, You cannot withstand the storm. The warrior replied, I am the storm. You are a warrior. You will get through the storm. You will show the storm who's boss. You will show everyone you are stronger than all things that have hurt you. You are stronger than your past. You are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. You will tell yourself, I don't invite life's challenges, but I don't back down from them either. I know we all face tough times. I know I'm not exempt from life's struggles, but I know I am strong. I know this will pass. I know there will be better days, but only if I keep fighting like a warrior, fighting with all my heart. The heart of a lion, the strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor, I am a warrior. I don't survive, I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. Warriors are built from the struggle, formed from pain, strengthened by adversity. Embrace your challenges and push through them like the warrior you are. You are stronger than your past and you are stronger than the challenges coming in your future. The strength I have is like no other. I am not a survivor. I am a warrior. I don't survive. I thrive. I can do this and I will get through this. I make the best of bad situations. I see the opportunity in the struggle. I grow strength from my hardships. I am thankful for my hard times. They make me
me stronger. I am thankful for the pain. It makes me raise my game. I am grateful for the worst of time. It ensures my story will be a great one. From zero to hero. From nothing to something. From the bottom to the top. Here I come. Boom. Boom, kaboom, kaboom. How is everyone doing? Good morning, good morning. It is a good Friday. Good Friday morning to everyone. Today is the day that we actually reflect we actually celebrate what Jesus has done. And you know what? It is a good thing because when you read what the law makes us do, it is not a fun thing. So I am super excited to have my spiritual mama and daddy here. So uh, without further ado, let me bring up Roger and Robin Fields. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, there we go. Good morning. Good morning. And isn't it a good morning? It is a good morning because today, and I know like you already said that you had some reflections that you want to share. So I really, uh, I want to get into it. But before we do that, we got just a couple things, just a couple things. We're going to say good morning. We have a, we have a birthday girl in the house. So we're going to make sure that we uh, celebrate Corinne, Rebecca's daughter, Corinne. It is her birthday. Woo! Okay. So good morning to Amy. There's D. Good morning to D. Linda Jones. There's Rebecca. There she is. Becky Pearl. Becky Pearl is in the house. Good morning, Becky Pearl. Good morning to Miss Shelley. Good morning, Pat. Heidi Love is in the house. Riley Queen is in. Good morning to Karen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Good morning to Swim Robin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see who else is here. Just kind of going down. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Gizmo's mom, Teresa. Teresa is here. Oh. Bill is here. Good morning to Bill. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Please make sure that you like and share the broadcast. Good morning to Holly. Hello. Good morning. Good morning to Wendy. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and uh, good morning. Today, today, Corinne is 33 years ago. Doctors didn't even think she'd make it this far, but God had God had some amazing things planned for her. So we're gonna we're gonna wish her a happy birthday as we do here on uh, Crown Chat because uh, that is what we do. And then we're gonna get into today's message. Did you have something to say, Mama? No. Okay. We're gonna just uh, we're gonna wish happy birthday to Corinne. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. There we go. Happy birthday to Corinne. There has been, wow, there is so much to talk about with Corinne because my goodness gracious, she is, well, first of all, she's like an energizer bunny. You know, <laughs> she takes a licking and keeps on ticking. She, or that's a Timex watch, actually. She is, uh, she has exceeded uh, so many doctors and diagnosis and, uh, but she has been doing some amazing, amazing things. She is such a blessing. I had the honor of baptizing her last year and I'm super excited about what God is doing in her life. Corinne, you really are a but God story and there's so much about your story I can't keep seeing that. Um, I do. I keep seeing you starting your own podcast. I know I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again and I'll say it until you start doing it. But I really believe that you can give people, especially people with any kind of um, um, setbacks, I think that you can set them up for God to move in their life. I really believe that you have not only have you given uh, the GGs such incredible um, um 
uh, faith in, in the power of prayer, but you truly have uh, shown your family what God can do. So after 55, 55 surgeries, come on now, um, she's alive. There are things that Corinne could not do that she can do. She, so she really is a miracle. She really is a miracle. And we love you, Corinne. I love your heart. I love, I love what you, how you just, uh, you look at life. I love the, the rose colored glasses, or I'm actually going to change that to the Jesus colored glasses that you wear, that you can, you can see Jesus in everything. And so we just bless you today on your 33rd birthday. And we just, um, I just uh, release just favor upon your life favor with doctors, that you're going to continue to be this, um, this patient that just shows doctors that we do have a great physician in heaven and his name is Jesus. And so we celebrate you. We celebrate everything about you. We love you. And we just wish you the best birthday. Mwah! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Good morning, Kim. Good morning. So yes, she does. She loves God and miracles. And yes, you are so blessed. You are. But let me just tell you, the prayers of my mama avail much. I will say that. So Rebecca, your prayers have availed much. So anyway, okay. Mama, Papa, you got anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I do. Do you have something? <clears throat> when I think of Corinne, I think I agree with your thing about the podcast because the Lord has filled her with so much joy in spite of everything she's had to go through. And it's almost yeah. like when we say the joy of the Lord is my strength, it's yeah. like her strength has become his joy, you know, because he's watched her, he's given her that strength and that faith. So she, he brings she brings him so much joy. And, you know, people that don't know her don't realize, you know, how overflowing she is with that joy that's what i see that's what i hear that's what i think of when i think of corinne not only is she a warrior princess bride of christ she is also a joyful daughter who the father delights in and so i agree with you that joy needs to be released um, because we need it we need joy yes. and god gives it to, to give away so i bless you corinne to give that joy away everywhere you go every opportunity you get because papa will open doors for you that nobody yes. else even can think of. He'll open doors that you never even, uh, never even thought about. So I just bless you to release that joy. And as you release it, it keeps coming in, coming in. It flows through us. That's how that works. And so, um, because you're not a stagnant uh, uh, river, you know, you're one that keeps flowing, flowing, flowing. So you've got a river of joy flowing out of you that song i got a river of joy flowing out of me that's you sing that song today on your birthday girl sing your song as lila says so i bless you with being the joy that you are and i bless you with all that god has before you because i know he's put great things in your heart and in your mind because you're very smart and he's put great things inside of you to do and those are his desire that you've come into agreement with. So I thank you, Father, for bringing all of those to pass. And we thank you for the miracle who is Corinne. Yes. All right. All right, what you got? Well, what I have is this. Okay. <clears throat> tell her, don't tell me. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still. Um, I feel like the Lord is saying, don't see your situation as a hindrance, but see it actually as a launching pad for many people. Mm, and on. a lot of the things you may be afraid to do is the very things he needs you to do and you need to do. You need to do it as much for yourself as you do it for the Lord. But mm. <clears throat> I see this, uh, you know, they used to have these halos that would go on the head of people who had victory, but yours has roses. Yours, Aww. your crown is rose, okay? So you need to be the fragrance of the Lord, whether it's through a podcast, or whether it's through ministry. However, there's something there that you have had in your heart for a long time that super succeeds anything you've ever imagined because you don't think you have what you need, but you do. The mm. Bible says, God says, be faithful in the little things 
and then I will put you in charge of much. So be faithful in the little things, Corrine, and God will exalt you to a higher place because he knows you're not doing it for yourself or anybody else. But as you enter into his glory, you experience the glory, and a lot of things are going to change around you that's going to be for the better. It's going to be for the better, not only for you, but for a lot of people that will hear you because somebody has to speak to them from a place where everybody else has given up. From a place of overcome. Right. Come on. A place of saying, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. It's not about what I am physically. It's about what I am spiritually. And you are a spiritual daughter of God. Do not look at your housing as being something that is a hindrance, but look at the spirit within the house, like the spirit of Elijah. Explain or Elijah. What you mean by house. Your house. The house. Your house is your temple. It's your body. And the Bible talks about the spirit that is in that comes from God. It dwells in our bodies. It does the will of God. And then one day when it's time, we go home. So God is just trying to tell you, you're on the threshold of moving out and beginning this. It doesn't matter. You don't have to come up. You don't have to be an expert speaker and all this other stuff. You just have to start. You just have to start. And he will go with you all the way. And I, pray, I praise the Lord for this. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. That was so good. She's smiling big. There you go. She's smiling big. Well, and you know what? Today is a great day to smile because today, not only is it Corinne's birthday, whoop, 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 but it also is a good Friday. And if we have, sorry, <laughs> if we, um, if we think I was trying, I'm trying to get my cow up. <laughs> um, if we really think about it, isn't, isn't today our birthday? Isn't today the day that we became born again? So today, if you really want to celebrate, um, today is our birthday too, because Jesus died for us so that we could have a new birth in him. So um, I kind of think that's, uh, that's something, I think that's why they call it a good Friday. Cause, cause I think that today we get to eat cake. I don't know. What about, <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys say? Well, I, I love today because I have a friend. Um, I'm going to post it on Facebook now, and I'll send it to you in case you want to post it. I wait for her to post this every year. Every year okay. when I get up, it's already on Facebook. She okay. goes, it's Friday. The men are scared. The women are crying. And the devil is mm -hmm. doing a little dance. It's Friday. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Sunday's a coming. That's <laughs> why it's a good Friday. Yeah. I love it so much. I will send it to you in case. But I, I love, love every, that. every year to do this. And she sends it faithfully. I said her this uh -huh. morning. I said, thank you. I do this every year. But this is what happened. People were sad. I mean, I have so much on on this today. I just, um, I just, uh, I'm just full. I've been studying and reading this week and thinking. I told a friend of mine, I said, I felt like, um, I don't know. I've been in a serious place this week. You know, I really have. And I thought, yeah, yeah, like I woke up a couple of days, I reached out to a couple of friends. I said, oh, God, I feel depressed. I don't know what's wrong with me. And so they prayed for me and I felt better and all that. In fact, one day I heard, I was meditating after I asked for prayer and I leaned back and I heard happy hour. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I got up and started to make those funny. But um, God got jokes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he does. But um, anyway, but it's been a week to, of reflection for me, you know, and, and I don't yeah. probably for many people too. Because when we think about, to me, this is the most important event in the history of mankind the yes, one most important ever and nothing yes. will ever change that i don't care what people come up with their theories and it could have been the blah, 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 whatever i know we know as believers what it is i've read so much this week and but this morning the thing that hit me was just what you said he said um th the lord was telling him you know and i sent you that youtube i was here <coughs> via de la rosa this morning yes. i love that by sending it is so beautiful, the way of suffering. I always thought it was the way of the cross, but it's the way of suffering. It is so beautiful. And when we think about what he did for us, I mean, how can it help but be a good Friday for us? Because he just, 
when we think how much he loved us, we think that, oh, well, it's a it's an out there abstract thing. No, it's not. It's a real life thing he did with his earthly body. He experienced pain. He experienced rejection. He experienced abandonment. He experienced things that we haven't even experienced yet, but he did it so that he can identify with us and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not identify, but be compassionate with us because he knows yes. how it feels. There's yeah. so many things you could work with the scripture today, but this one right here, I picked it up to do a little more reading this morning. And in John, blah, 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 there's so much. In John 16, I can't really read that good. And Okay. He was talking to them. He said, um, he was had told them uh, about going to the Father, right? Mm. And, you know, he was always telling the disciples things. And they're like, duh, what's he talking about? Like we do a lot of times. God right, tells right, right. us things. And what? Duh, what does that mean? You know, <laughs> can we go ask somebody mm -hmm. else instead of asking the Father, you know? But anyway, that he said, um, he had told him about, you know, he said, I'll be gone and you'll see me no more. But just a little while after that, you'll see me again. They said, what, what's he talking about? Basically, what is he talking about? We don't know what he means. Right, Where right. is he going? So he got, he realized they wanted to ask him. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I mean? The world will greatly, listen to this. This is great. The world will greatly rejoice over what is going to happen to me. And you mm. will weep. But your mm. weeping shall suddenly be turned into wonderful joy when you are when you see me again, which they did. It will be the same joy as that of a woman in labor when her child is born. Just what somebody said, the rebirth. It's our birthday, too. Mm. Um, her anguish gives place to rapturous joy and the pain is forgotten. And that's what he's saying. that It was going to happen to him and to them, too. And to us, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. How many mm. scriptures in here where he talks about I would, that your joy would be full, your joy would be complete. You would have abundant joy, abundant. You know, it's all about he wants us to have that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything for you can go directly to the father and ask him and he will give you what you ask for because you use my name. You haven't mm. tried this before, but in now, ask using my name and you will receive and your cup of joy will overflow. He did it for the joy. Come he on. didn't do it for the show. He did it for the joy of, of knowing that we would be sorrowful, but and yet we would be able to be born again. And so, mm. I mean, you could just go on. It's, it's just it's so good. Um, but here's the reason. I've spoken of these matters very guardedly, but the time will come when this will not be necessary, and I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will present your petitions over um, my signature. Listen to this over my signature, and I will need to ask. I won't need to ask the Father to grant you these requests, for the Father Himself loves you dearly, because you love me, and because I came from the Father. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and will leave the world and return to the Father. Mm -mm. I want to tell you. I'll get to the other place that. Uh, he has he had to go. Where is it? Is it 16 or 17, Roger? About the Holy Spirit. All of them from 14 to 17. But he said, I have to go. If I don't go, the comforter won't come. And that meant we wouldn't have joy because he brings the Holy That's Spirit. Where it's brings it. in 17, I uh, I'm in there. Oh, Father, yeah, let me see. Um, that they may be one as we are one. Yes, in that. But um, I think it's in 16. When he comes, he will convict the world. That's what I'm looking for. Um, when he comes, he will convict, convict the, world. the world of sin and righteousness. Well, really? Yeah. And righteousness. See, we all want to condemn everybody. That's not what he said. <clears throat> Here he goes. Here he goes. It's in 15. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let me go with. But I will send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the source of all truth. He will come to you from the Father. And will tell you all about me. And you uh, also must tell everyone about me because you have been with me from the beginning. Mm. I've told you these things so that you won't be staggered by all the lies ahead. Oh, my God. Do we get lied on? I got to yeah. look this up because this is something I really wanted to get to. Because he said, if I don't leave, he can't come. I have to go. And you know what that carries me to? That carries me to, and I've read this this week. 
unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it's only yep. one single wheat. But when yep. it does, what well, well, it was implied, it was inferred. But when it does, it brings forth a greater harvest. And that's mm. what he was saying. And you know what, guys? Our lives are that, too. Mm. Our lives are like that, too. We're not just here for us. We're not. We're here to bring a harvest to the kingdom, to the Lord, and a kingdom of righteousness. I was listening to somebody this morning talking about the harvest and, you know, our parts and, and everything. But we, you know, our lives are going to, we're sowing our lives into the kingdom as we live, whether we realize it or not. We can be, or we can sow to the flesh. We sow to the flesh or to the spirit. But if we sow to the spirit, then there will be a harvest for the kingdom. And that's what it's all about. That's what our lives are supposed to be all about as believers. That's what Jesus did. And if we're going to be like him, that's what we'll do too. And so um, all the suffering that we all go through, that song, the Via Dolorosa, I mean. I, you know, I, I have it loaded. I have it loaded okay. if you want, whenever you want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We know what he went through. I mean, we can detail all of that. But if mm -hmm. you, you know, I think we do need to read it every year. We need to read it every year and be reminded yeah. so that the little bitty things we're going through that seem so major, we realize mm -hmm. this is nothing. This is nothing. It's mm -hmm. big in my life and he's concerned about it. Yes. But he did all of this. So I don't have to be concerned. So I know at the end of the day, no matter how much suffering I feel like I'm going through, that joy is coming because yeah. sorrow lasts the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that's what Sunday morning is all about. I love that mm -hmm. thing. I'm going to try to post it on Facebook too, but I love that so much. I know you want to. Oh, I have that. I have that too. You want me to, you want me to bring that up? Okay. Oh, you want to play it? Um, when, whenever yeah, you're ready. The scripture? Um, I have the, I mean, the thing that he said. No. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, the thing. Yeah. Do you want me yeah. to play that now? Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. Let me sure. Just go. Okay, hold on. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go here. Okay, here we go. This should do it. There it is. And here we go. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die. He was bleeding from a beating, there were stripes upon his back, and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death.
it just ooh, ooh. tears me apart. It just tears me apart. It just tears oh my me apart. gosh. That was also, like, oh. holy moly. Everybody's crying now. <laughs> Everybody's know, crying. I, <laughs> oh my God. Um, I know this is, oh, I'm telling you. That's really good. Oh um, my gosh. That but was you know, so good. Yeah, good. That's what it's, it's. What's her name? Sandy Patty. I don't know if anyone who does it better than her. I really don't. What a voice. So he did all of that. I know it. He did all of that. And then he knew, mm -hmm. you know, if you go back and read, like, you know, yesterday was Monday, Thursday, you know, they um, yeah. had the last supper and, you know, the, the uh, guards came and got him and all that stuff. Today was not a good day for Jesus, you know. No. Yeah. It's, it's a good day. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm no, not that's sorry. Okay. No, don't that's be sorry good. because, wow, that's like when you said today was a good day, you know, but it wasn't a good day for Jesus. Yeah. That just hit me. Yeah. Wow. But he knew. See, he knew. What, what yeah. was one of the old songs they used to sing in the Baptist church? He could have called 10,000 angels, yeah, but he, he died alone for you and me. And he told them. I can do, I, I laid, I, nobody takes my life. I lay it down. Yeah. And here's what came to me. I was listening to this song all just this time. Uh, he chose to do this. And this is, this is our, this is supposed to be our life as believers, yeah. which I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working hard on it. I'm trying. I'm not there, but that is that we're supposed to choose the high road. We're supposed to choose to lay down our life, our way, our rights, our thoughts, our opinions, getting the last word, having my say, being on a platform, having a whatever I think I need, a bank full of money. I it, It's a choice. He made a choice to lay everything down. And that's supposed to be what we're doing. And we're, we are, we're, we're being crucified. What's the, um, uh, the scripture Galatians? It's no longer I who live, but Christ okay. who lives in me. And if that's the case, if that's the case, and I believe it is because he even said this in John in the prayer, but then he's teaching me how to do these things. Right. And it's not easy. It's not easy. We have our own via dolorosas, you know, our own ways of suffering. And so, right. you know, and he's with us though because he's already been. You see, yeah. this is the point. He's already been there. It's the whole point. And so he says, I've been and I've overcome. I mean, remember, I cannot get over that. I posted on Facebook again, the thing about what does it say? I love it so much. I, I could say it all day on Friday. I okay, love it so much. I'm gonna oh. I'm gonna put it up right now. Hold on, let me see if I can get it. So good. Okay, there it is. All right, don't say it. I mean, we're, we are sad. Yeah, we are sad. You know, mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. sad. And yet, and yet, mm -hmm. see, that's what that's why he came. Are you putting it up? You gonna put it up? Yep, I am. I just gotta convert. I have to convert it to a jpeg because <laughs> it came in it came no it's fine it came in as something else uh if I oh okay i'm sorry no you're good no don't apologize you is good all right it's friday okay. i love it it's friday okay what happened on friday the men were scared i just read this yesterday have you been reading this this week you know peter's like oh i'll never deny you and the next thing you know he's like oh what did i just do how many times do we do that? Oh, what did I just do? I just condemned somebody with my words. I just said something I shouldn't have said. I just put a shadow over somebody. I just denied the Lord and, and whatever, you know. And, and and Jesus told him, you're going to do it. There you go. It's Friday. The men are scared. They ran. They ran. The women are crying. They're like, where's Jesus? Where's my Lord? And the devil is doing a little dance, like along with the uh, Caiaphas and the priest and all that. It, it, and, and he's like, aha, I got you, because it's Friday, all that's going on. But Sunday is a coming, and we know it. We know it's coming. <laughs> and, and it's going to be a glorious day. Uh, every day is a Sunday for us, if you think yeah, about it. it. Every day we wake up <coughs> is a Sunday for us, because we wake up to the glory of God and, you know, in us and all around us. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why this Easter is just really, uh, well, I guess Easter always does that for me, but in the past few years, but let me tell you what, why it's such a good Friday. When you go, oh, it's a good Friday. Oh, Jesus was beaten. We cry and we do cry. We are sad, but he just told me, you're going to be sorrowful, but your joy is coming. Your joy is still coming. Okay. So, all right, this, let me read this to you out of John 16. 
of, of the passion, of course. I have told you this to the disciples so that you would not surrender to confusion or doubt. Hello, how many of us is that? Or so that you won't have a trap laid for you or you won't be crushed. Doubt can be a trap then. That's what that tells yes, me. And it can. Mm -hmm. For you will be excommunicated from the synagogues and a time is coming when you will be put to death by misguided ones who will presume to be doing God a great service by putting you to death. Oh, wait, wrong one. Um, those who kill you will think they are presenting a holy offering to God. How many times do we do things? Oh, this is for you, Lord. This is for you. And we're, we're killing somebody else. We're doing something bad to someone. We're condemning them. How many times do we do that? And they will do these things because they don't know about the Father or me. I'm telling you this now so that when their time comes, you will remember that I foretold it. Prophecy, the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy is Jesus, right? That's right. I didn't tell you this in the beginning because I'm still with you. But now that I'm about to leave you and go back to join the one who sent me, you need to be told. Yet not one of you are asking me where I'm going. Instead, your hearts are filled with sadness because I've told you these things. But here's the truth. Here's the good news. Here's the gospel. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the divine encourager will not be released to you. And That's what right. the note on that says, he's the redeemer of the curse. The redeemer mm -hmm. of the curse will not be released to you. But after I depart, I will send him to you. Like, he can't be here while I'm here. Okay, we don't understand the fullness of that, but it's a fact. He said, if I'm here, he can't be. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And when he comes, he will expose sin and prove that the world is wrong about God's righteousness and his judgments. Sin, because they refuse to believe in who I am. So it's a sin not to believe in who Christ is. Mm -hmm. Right, God's righteousness. I'm going back to join the Father and you'll see me no longer. Listen to this. And judgment, because the ruler of this dark world has already received his sentence. Listen to this note. I love it. Hold on. Let me get it. Oh, shoot. Come on. I, how did I do that? Okay, there you go. His sentence. Give me a second. Give me just a second here. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that, Roger? There you go. So, in judgment, because the ruler of this dark world has already received his sentence. In essence, sin, righteousness, and judgment are related to three persons. Sin is related to Adam, for it was through Adam that, that sin entered humanity. We were talking about that. Righteousness is related to Christ because it comes through him, and he has become our righteousness. That's judgment right. is related to sin for the pure works of Christ bring judgment to the works of Satan. If we do not embrace Christ's righteousness, we will share Satan's judgment. And then he's telling, there's a whole lot more that I want to tell you, but but you can't understand it right now. And that's for us we as we get it. But when the truth giving spirit comes, he will un unveil the reality of every truth within you. He won't speak on his own, but only what he hears from the father. He will reveal prophetically to you what is to come. He will glorify me on the earth, for he will receive from me what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. That's why I say that the divine encourager will receive what is mine and reveal it to you. Soon you won't see me any longer, but then after a little while, you will see me in a new way. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that. I know you got something to say. I love that. I, he's telling us stuff we couldn't, we still can't get it. All these many years mm -hmm. later, we don't get the fullness of it. And think if you were yeah. a disciple there, which we can't, and you're you're going through all this stuff with him, and you're like, I think I, I think I've got it. I think he's the Messiah. I don't really know all that that means. And yet, you know, he's telling us all this kind of stuff, and we don't know what to do with it. When he tells us that we don't know what to do with it, you know, we right. ponder and meditate. What all he said, but. Right. But there's something good coming out of this. Don't take your Via Dolorosa, your way of suffering, mm -hmm. and leave it because there's going to be some good coming out of that. It will be good Come just on. for you. It's, you're not here. We're not here just for right. us. We're here for everyone we influence. We're here, like I was listening to this morning, for the people at the checkout at the grocery store, for the person in front of me that's causing me to want to give them a horn cussing. And, you know, I, we're here for all of those people. You know, we're not just here for us. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing that all week. Mm -hmm. It's not just for us. It's not all about us. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, go ahead. I don't know, man. I told you I am full. I've been reading this week. That's I have felt so the Lord.
I'm just so full. I'm just so appreciative of what he's done. And I'm just so, just so full. I think my lamp is full of oil today. Finally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you need to say anything? I could go on. I love it. I love this. I just love, to, just love that, you know, that we get to experience this with him now. You know, we wouldn't have known what to do back then. We'd have been, whose side would you have been on? What would you have done? Would we have run away? I would. I, I know I would have run away. Roger would have been there. He wouldn't have been like Peter. He'd have been, he'd have been somewhere between Peter and John, you know, somewhere between that, you know, but, um, all I don't right. know what I would have done. Let me say this. All right. The blood of the Lamb, Jesus, was Good Friday. Yeah. And the blood is what covers us to cleanse us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was only the Lamb of God that could take away the sins of the world because he had to wash us and cleanse us before the Holy Spirit could enter us. Oh, oh, that's good. Nine. That's really good. That's, I didn't know that. That's because good. I like that. The Holy Spirit was not known in the way that He was known by Jesus. Right. He would come upon the the prophets of old and and speak and give words of wisdom and so forth, because it was always wisdom. Yeah. But they did not know how to enter into a relationship with him because Jesus said in Matthew 12, when they were saying that he was doing it by the power of Beelzebub, he said, look, this is Southern. This is my slang. <laughs> he said, you can talk about my daddy and you can talk about me, but don't you talk about That's the Holy right. Spirit. Don't talk about the Holy he Spirit. said, because when you talk about the Holy Spirit, he said, you're doing something that cannot be washed from you. It's like once you put that shame or whatever on, on the Holy Spirit, how do you expect the Holy Spirit to engage you with the fact of knowing that you are loved? Mm, so a lot on. of people don't realize, the, a lot of people don't realize the deeper in the relationship we come with the Holy Spirit, the more of the heart and mind and will and purpose of the Father and Son is revealed. Yeah. Jesus came to show us how to act like children of the Father. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes and teaches us and encourages us and is patient and gives us the gifts to help us to be matured into what that looks like as, first of all, children of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, the Good Friday, he said, because he said in John 14, 18, he said, I will not leave you as an orphan. Come on. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not Come leave on. you as feeling abandoned or whatever. He said, but I'm going to send the comforter back to you. And this comforter is the Holy Spirit. That was so powerful for Jesus. He yeah. said, it is expedient for you I'm, that I, I go away. Go. Because right. if I don't go away, the very thing that makes me who I am will not come. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. will not come. And so we have to understand that when we are going through these things in life, while we sometimes feel like something has happened and we're dying, mm. we have to understand that on the other side of that suffering is glory. Come on. Right. Always. It's glory. Always. Because Jesus Always. saw the cross, That's right. but he looked beyond the cross and saw his father. And he saw us. Yeah, and we have to understand whatever we're going through has nothing, is nothing compared to what we're going right. to receive. That's right. Come on. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he died to cleanse us. If we will not accept his blood to cleanse us, <clears throat> then we cannot receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who comes because they all work together. You can't do it through righteous acts. Right. We can't pray and fast and study our Bibles and quote the whole. We can't do any of that. None of that is going to replace the blood right. of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's and without right. the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not going to receive 
the Holy Spirit that will give us revelation. Because once Jesus died and he got up from the grave, it says he came back to them and walked in and began to talk to them about the kingdom of heaven. That's right. And they finally said, oh. oh. And then after he left, it was 10 days before the Holy Spirit came. Because the Holy Spirit wants to know. Right. He oh, wants okay. to know, do we really want him? Are we willing to wait for his yeah. uh, arrival? That's right. So that's a lot of times we are impatient. We don't want to wait. We just want to do. But sometimes the Lord said this to us. Don't do anything. Don't try it until you are endued with power from on high. Mm -hmm. Until the Holy Spirit comes and you are endued with power, don't even leave the room. And a lot of us need to understand that. The Holy Spirit is preparing us, but we have to wait for him to tell us when to step out. So the blood, Good Friday, was for us to receive back into our life what Adam's sin did, which was, we basically, after we took, they took of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, the light went off of them and they saw they were naked because they didn't have the covering of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit stayed there for a while and he says, well, I guess they don't need my wisdom. So it says he went back and sat down beside Papa. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, the second Adam, and he bled and died to cleanse us the bloodline of that curse so the Holy Spirit could now rest upon us in the righteousness of Christ. For it is not I that makes myself righteousness. I can't do anything, anything. to make myself no, good not. because only not. goodness comes from the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I can't do anything. I can raise a million people from the dead. That doesn't make me righteous. Right. It is right. only the goodness of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is only the righteousness. It is only Good Friday where the blood was poured out by the Father when he sacrificed his son that he had already put into place long before the world was ever founded so that you and I could be washed so he could now put upon us, if you will, or fill us with the love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that, to me, is Good Friday. It means that he says, I'm doing this so you can receive something you don't have. And you don't know how bad you need it until you've got it. That's right. So that's... And then you go, oh, how did we work without this? Yes. 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 All right. Now i got something else to read. This is good. I want to read this little passage to get okay. this one footnote. Is that okay? We all well, yeah, that? Okay. I was going to do this a kaboom, but I can wait. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're going to want to do a kaboom after this. Wait till I okay. can share this with you. You can continue. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you better when you do it, though, but anyway. <clears throat> okay. All right. John 16. Okay. Still in the Passion. Uh, and somebody was asking about the Passion translation. He I, is already on, sent, so I, I sent it to her. Book. I sent okay, her that. He I finished her. Yeah. Good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Jesus was praying for us. Okay. He was praying for us. He'd already prayed for the disciples, okay? Come on. And he said, I ask not only for these disciples, but also for all those who will one day believe in me through their message. That's us. I pray for them all to be joined together as one, meaning Jews and non-Jews, even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. I pray for them to become one with us or in us mm. so that the world will recognize that you sent me. In other words, are we acting like Jesus? You know, <laughs> for the very you have given to me I have given to them he has given to us all right so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy okay uh -huh. is and I'm gonna read that because this is this is not the one there's one more it's important to note the key to unity among believers is experiencing the glory of God that Jesus imparted to us. Don't you know when we are in meetings or in corporate places together and we feel the glory come, don't we just love each other in a whole different way? Don't yes. we feel like we're one It's a whole different love. You know, it, our love expands, it grows, and it glows. As one with God through faith in Christ, he shares his glory with us since we are not another but have been made one with the triune God through the blood of Jesus. 
we're not somebody who's out there. We're one with him. We're one with each other too. And the okay, you live in me, and I now I believe fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity in us and together. And um, wait a minute, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one. Okay, you live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity, which means to shrink into one. When we see Jesus in one another, our vaulted opinions of ourselves will shrink. That's oh, the thing. That. That's the problem for me right there. Right our there. vaulted opinions of ourselves will shrink. Yes. So good. Are we ready for the boom? I'm ready. I love that. All what right, let's do the boom. Because seriously, that we're was shrinking good. shrinking to him. So you're we're not shrinking, all that in the bag of Shrinking stuff. into him. And the world will be confused. There you Four go. <laughs> okay. Roger said it's another glory bomb. It's another glory explosion. Another glory bomb. Yeah. That's it. That's Let's it. Call them glory bomb. We can call so he glory goes, bomb. That's right. The world will be convinced that you have sent me, for they will see that you love each one of them with the same uh, passionate love that you have for me. And we're supposed to love one another with that same passionate love. If we're in him yes. and he sent us, there's no separation. We're not another yeah. person. We're together. That's why it's that's why we all love getting together because not only does it okay, the way I see it when we all get together, I get to see another facet of my father. I get to see another facet of the glory of God when I look at each one of you, you know, and it's just amazing. It's I, I marvel at the God and everybody. I love it. The good and the bad, okay, whatever. And so um, but but then it's almost like the glory just increases, you know, when we're together. Yeah. We can be like we were, uh, you know, in the lobby of the hotel. And I was like, look, you know, we're here to take over. We own this place. We're bringing <laughs> we're in the glory. We own this place, you know. We don't, yeah. you know, whatever. But but it's just so good. That's why we love getting together because we're all bringing our part of Jesus. And Come that on. passionate love explodes like the glory bomb you just did. Okay, I'm going to stop now. Uh, picture. I think we need to picture ourselves. What I was just seeing in the spirit. We need to picture ourselves as being one of the twenty-four elders around the throne of God. Oh. And when Ooh. they cast their crowns at His feet, Ooh. and surrounded the throne, they surrounded yeah. the throne. Yeah. And they cried, "Holy, holy is worthy is the Lamb." Yeah. We yeah. need to understand that when they were doing this, they didn't talk about each other. Yeah. They didn't point. They didn't, they did, they Good weren't point. doing the Peter thing or they weren't doing the disciples thing like they didn't know. They they weren't saying, Lord, which one is the greatest? Mm -hmm. You know, what is what does the person have to do to be the greatest? No, it's not about that at all because he's the greatest. He yes. He is the greatest. He's the G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. And the thing that we need to understand, God really expects this of us. Yes. And this is our challenge. He died to make us one with him. He died to make us one with him, to fill us yeah. with the Holy Spirit, to be in relationship with the Father so that mm. we could all walk together as it was supposed to be before the fall of the first Adam. But if we're all acting like they did after the fall of the first Adam, when God was saying that he was sorry that he had ever made man. And when he looks at us today, after 2000 years, after the cross, after the Holy Spirit, after the establishment of the, if you will, the gang of Jesus Christ, the church, the question is, are we acting like they did in the book of Acts where everybody cared for one another? Or are we acting like they did in the sixth chapter of Genesis when God said he was sorry that he had ever made man? Repented of making man, yeah. All right, hold on and one that's, second. That's where the church is, okay. Aw. Poor Sally. <laughs> 
Some, things need, to, some things need to be kicked. Some yeah. things need to be kicked because we can call ourselves a Christian. We can wear our crosses. We can wear the, We can listen to the music and have our pretty little Bible covers and everything. But are we reflecting Jesus? If we are, if we are Christians, it says that we're Christ followers. But are we following Christ in everything that we do? Are we representing him well? Because that, that's where, that's kind of where I am right now. I'm doing I'm doing some like you were saying you were doing some reflections. I I that I was doing the same thing a couple of days ago. Like Shelly looked at me, she's like. You're being very introspective. <laughs> I'm like, yep. She's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. I, but I think that the weightiness, the weightiness of what Jesus did is really, it really sat on me this week. It really sat on me because yeah. when we, if you've never watched the passion of the Christ, put on your big girl pants, put on your big boy pants and go and watch it. I'm well, it's too graphic. I don't want to no. put on your big girl pants, put on your big boy pants and go and watch it. Suck it up, buttercup, grab your tissues, but you need to see. And it, and that depiction that, that, that Mel Gibson gave in the passion of the Christ, they, they actually, it was worse. It was worse. Yeah. And they wouldn't uh, let him yeah. do it. They wouldn't let right. him do it because it would have made him have an R. I mean, an X rating, an X rating, not an R rating, an X rating, because it was no. going to be so explicit of what he wanted to do no. that the yeah. studio would not let him do it. But that's yeah. probably the reality, because we couldn't, if we truly saw, if we truly saw what they did to the Jesus that we love, if they, if we truly saw how they beat him and tortured him, and if we look at these these soldiers that were probably so filled up with demonic presence, demonic because they weren't they weren't believers, but those demons wanted to kill him, and we hear about the descriptions of what demons do to people in hell, and hell be real, but. When we start to hear these things, when we start to understand these things, it would blow your mind. I think it would really blow your mind that he did it and he did it with joy. He did it right. with joy. It says the, that with joy set before him. For the joy set before him. But you know what? I doubt that he was grinning and laughing during the whole. No, no, but what was so, but yeah. what was so amazing that we forget uh -huh. that we need to see is that he didn't count his body as being more precious than his spirit. That's right. That's because right. the Bible tells us he already knew what they were going to do to his body yes. when he got to the earth. Yes. That he already knew, and so yes. he was saying. I give my life, which was the blood. Yes. Nobody takes it. I That's give right. it willing, I willingly. Yes. And then what we have to understand, we as children of God, when he said, as we do many times, my God, my God, why have, why have you forsaken me? Mm. And then in the next breath, he says, but into your hands, I commit my spirit. Yes. And he breathed his last and gave up the, whole, you know, the spirit. We need to understand sometimes it's when we get to the edge where we think we're not going to be able to take one more day, one more step, one more thought, whatever. We don't realize that's when we encounter the father. Mm. Because he's saying, is your life, is your flesh, is it more important than your spirit right. of mm. who you are? Because mm. they can kill the body, but they can't do anything with the spirit. Do mm. not fear them who can destroy the body. He said, but fear him who has the power over the spirit, if you will. Awesome. So we and we need to understand. We really need to understand. Jesus went through all that far. We do not understand the depth of what everything that's in that. He really went don't. through that saying, <clears throat> it's not about my no. body. My body is representing a lamb. I think that's why in that when he prayed, you know, he prayed for disciples, he prayed for us and he prayed for himself. Okay. Right. And then 
And if you think about that whole picture of shrinking into, it was at that point he had to shrink into the father, mm. you know, so that his value of what he was saying was not over overwhelming everything that he knew was coming. To Irene's point, it, you know, we know it says he was unrecognizable as a man. You know, that's why they said, behold, the man. Is this a man? You know, he was <coughs> such, you know, then. And, and to your point about the, the passion, I think I read something similar. They said that if they had really done everything like, you know, it was happening, like it happened, that people couldn't take it. We would have been like, oh, you know, people couldn't. Take it. And I believe that. And they don't but, understand that it mm -hmm. wasn't just the stripes on his back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, <clears throat> those cat of nine tails went all the way around his body and pulled flesh and bone mm -hmm. and everything else. They said you could actually see his organs inside of his body. Yeah. This was, was this was what it was like for the first lamb that was offered in Exodus when the Lord told him, he said, prepare the lamb. Now check this out. <clears throat> he said, if there's not enough people in your house, then bring another home in to be able to devour this lamb. And none is to be left until the morning. But they had to leave the lamb whole. They had to leave the intestines and everything in this lamb when it was roasted. Mm. Everything. And so in that, it says when they partook of it, it says when they left, they left totally healed. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so they get one lamb for two families. God offered a lamb for the whole world. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, I think you get a boom for that. Hold on one second. Hold on. <laughs> Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. Seriously. We won't be together on Sunday. And mm -hmm. so yeah, we will. We won't be all together on Sunday. But, and the thing is that. It's just like in life. We can focus on the bad. We have to mm -hmm. see, we have to know the suffering, okay? The suffering of Christ and our suffering, okay? Yeah. But then we also have to focus on the goodness, which is what makes this a good Friday. The goodness is on Sunday morning, he was gone. He's like, I'm out of here, y'all. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'll come back and let you know what happened. I'm going to feed you a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about some things. I'm gone. This is what I meant when I was telling you, you're going to be sad, but then your joy's coming because you're going to see me again, you know, and then what I have is yours. Everything I have is yours because you can't inherit until somebody dies. Until somebody, somebody dies. has to die. To inherit something. Well, one of the biggest things too, is he was saying, I've trained you for three and a half years or three years, right? Even Paul said he had to go on the backside of the desert and he had to be trained three years by Christ in order for him to be a true disciple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so mm -hmm. he basically said, I've told you and I've shown you what you can do, how to act, how to live. He said, now do it. I'm out. I've done my part. You go do it. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we misunderstand. Well, I don't need someone to lay their hands on me to anoint me to be what God created me to be. Mm -hmm. But I do need people to pray for me that everything that God put in me would be brought out to his Come glory, out. to his glory, not mine. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to carry <clears throat> anything with us. We want to give out everything he put in us. Why are we going to take it back? He gave it to us to release. Remember, I this scripture I use in Peter all the time. You're not getting anything else. It's already in you. Get rid of it. Give it away. Do what I think Come you on. Doing. Come the on. Lord told me, the Lord told me years ago, he said, your job is not for Robin to treat you like you're a king. Your job as a king is to pull all the treasure out of your wife that I've placed in her so that she will be seen as the queen that she is. And he oh. said, you better be careful. You better be careful how you handle it because she's my daughter. And then he also tells me every king needs a queen. That's right. And so if I'm the queen. I have to keep, treat him like my king. You know, that's right. Not the king of kings. He's the king of kings. And so, so we don't get that. And he tells he me. He's the king of kings. Right. So, right? so if I want to be, if I want to 
be treated like a king. I have to treat her like a queen. That's right. Oh, come on. Can I kick a cow? Uh -huh. And that's why we're doing that marriage retreat. Oh, yeah. Right. I know. Uh -huh. That's uh, yeah. a nice segue. Very nice segue. Yeah, nice. That's segue. a very nice well, segue. Anybody, anybody yes, I know. Interested? We're going to uh, with Gary and Mary um, uh, in October. October 11th. October 11th through 13th, we're doing a marriage retreat again. It's going to be at the Tuscarora Inn in the Pocono Mountains in uh, Pennsylvania. And it's going to be great. We had such a good time last time. If any of you are married and you really want to come, I'm telling you, you will. It, it's worth the investment of your time and your resources and everything. It's going to be awesome. Um, so I don't know if anyone's interested. If you are, contact me and I'll give you the details. But I'm telling you, we have to kind of know about we have to know how many by April 20th, I think. Um, and then again, in July, we can, you know, up or down some. You can but, talk to Robin about yeah, it. You can talk to me about it. But it's going to be great. And that's the kind of thing we talk about. You know, it's like it's not the way we all grew up. Hey, if we treated each other the way we grew up, mm -mm, we'll just end it a long time ago. And we're, it was, we're 48 years. 48 years. We've been married 48 years. It'll be 49 <coughs> in December. So, you know, so yeah. And, and uh, it's like, why is it called a marriage retreat? Why is it called a marriage advancement? Because we want to retreat into the intimacy of the Lord with each other and fellowship. And it's a time to retreat from the world and come together. And to with remember the Lord. why yeah. you got married. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. To remember why in your vows and your promises. Because whether we realize it or not, God holds us to our vows. Yep. It's in the Bible. And yep. if it's in the Bible, it is true. And so sometimes you and I were never taught what true marriage is like. Now, we're the bride of Christ, and he treats us like his queen. But the question is, do we really treat him like he's our king? Come on. Do we represent the kingdom of heaven, or do we represent the kingdom of Roger? You know, what? I just love the I just love the scripture. I love it. Uh, you can't get away from joy. You cannot read the scripture and get not get joy in there. Okay, listen. I'm going to read it. I was looking for something else. Uh, celebrate with praises the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown us His extravagant mercy. For His fountain of mercy has given us a new life. We are reborn. What we were talking about yeah, to experience a living, energetic hope, not to sit around crying and whatever. What we don't have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly listen. Through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though you lately have up with the grief of many trials. But these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic mm -hmm. faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor. When Jesus, the anointed one, is revealed, you love him passionately, although you've not seen him. But through believing in him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. For you are reaping the harvest of your faith, the full salvation promised you, your soul's victory. That is good news, y'all. I'm that sorry. Good news. That's good news. That is good news. very good That's news. news. I love it. You cannot I get know. away from joy. No. Jesus, he, he wants us to understand joy, you know? Mm -hmm. He wants us to know that, yes, mm -hmm. sorrow comes for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. It's coming yeah, whenever it your morning is. Whether it's Sunday morning when the tomb is empty or Monday morning when you wake up and, and your Social Security check comes in or somebody drops a little something in your bank account or you get a surprise check in the mail. Lord, we'll take any and all of that. Or you wake up and you're healed in a way that you weren't before. <coughs> or, you wake up or you wake up and your heart is full of love for somebody you were mad at. Or Me. You couldn't forgive. 
you know, or whatever it is. You know, you wake up and you're just glad to be alive. Joy is coming in the morning. Come on. Robin never gets mad at me. Okay. I'll go with that. <laughs> so I'm prophesying. We'll go with that. As Robin would say, oh, you're going with that, are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> because okay, so sometimes we are saying yeah. the same thing, but we're saying it in a different, different way. Ways. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes we feel like, why are we saying the same thing in different ways? Because we're different people. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all yeah. I got to say. <laughs> that's all. That's all you got to say. I'm sure there's more. And that's, that's the, we'll, we'll go with that because each of the disciples witnessed, they witnessed the account. Well, some did because Peter ran away. There, and I, I think some of them did, right? Some of them, except for, I think, James and John. I think they they pretty much were there the entire time. But a no, lot of the disciples. Just John. John. It was just John, John and the John. women. John. It was just John and just the women. Just John and the okay. women. Because remember, John was the beloved. John said, I love yeah. him too much to leave him. And the yes. other guys, like a lot of us, we don't think that, you know, there was there's a lot more to John, but but the biggest thing of it is is that I believe that John, because he had such a close relationship with Jesus, that mm -hmm. when he said one of you at the table will betray me, and all of them turned to John and said, ask him which one it is, and John laid his head on his chest and looked up in his eyes and he said, who is it, Lord? Mm -hmm. Maybe we all be that? like John. May we all be like John. Yes, because John, John was one. We don't even have a record of his death. No, I don't think he died. That's my own personal opinion. I don't he, think he died. I he, think he was like Enoch. He was kind of translated. He walked into. He could have been, and he could have been one of the ones who comes back in Revelation. We don't know. You. There's yeah. God doesn't reveal everything, but mm -hmm. He only reveals His mysteries, His secrets to those mm -hmm. He can trust. That's right. That's right. And that's, Amen. I think that's uh, one of the things that when I was first walking, you know, in my prayer time, it, you know, that, that God really revealed to me. And he said that we need to be like all the disciples, that we need to have that boldness of Paul, because Paul was bold. But we need to have that faith, that faith that makes us walk on water, that that faith that our the, the shadow, hit, that our shadow heals people. Like Peter, we need to have that love, that love that John had, the one that he knew how much he was loved. But we also need to have the discernment of Thomas. Everybody gives Thomas a bad rap, but discernment is so crucial in your walk with the Lord. It's so crucial because if we do not discern, then we cannot learn. That's right. And I think a lot of people, when you read the uh, 14 epistles of Paul, they don't realize that through his 14 epistles, he's actually going through deliverance. Wow. Oh. God is changing him yes. until, he gets to, until he gets to the end. And finally, he says, everything I thought I, know, I knew is nothing okay. except all I want to know is Christ and him crucified. crucified. In, yes. And you know, yes. because that's all I want to know. I have to put all this other stuff back because it's not about all the other stuff. We get to do it. It's the icing on the cake, whatever. But it's about knowing that I have hope. I have faith. I have belief that whenever my time comes, when I finish my mission, I'm going to be gathered to my Lord, my King, there with Papa and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be okay. And if I don't know that in my heart, if I'm afraid in my heart that I'm going to stand before him one day and, and he's going to say, you didn't do the one thing I sent you to do. And people, 99% people feel they're going to be rejected by God because they keep saying, I need to know what God wants me to do so I can get it done so he won't be angry at me. That's not the gospel. That's, That's right. not the gospel whatsoever. Because Jesus sprinkled the blood, the glorified blood, on the heavenly altar, on the mercy seat. And that blood says there is peace between us and Papa. 
There is no hostility. There's no anger. There's nothing. When you and I sit, as we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, God looks at us and looks through the blood, sees us filled with the Holy Spirit, and he says, there's no condemnation here. What are you talking about? You know, mm. you're my son, you're my daughter first. All the other stuff is is minimal. It's just, it doesn't really mean that much. But mm. I want you to live like you're royalty. Yeah. But I don't want you to live in such royalty of high-mindedness that you don't realize from time to time you're going to have to go through some suffering. You're going mm. to have to discern. You're going to have to rule and reign in your own life and in things around you. So yes. when we look at the cross, when we look at the cross, he didn't just anoint us with the scepter. He anointed us with his blood. Ooh. We are a covenant. We are a covenant. We are a covenant. We are under the blood, the covenant, which speaks higher than the blood of bulls or ox or sheep. We are under the covenant of the Lamb of God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the one, the everlasting. We are under a covenant that speaks higher volumes than any other sacrifice that you and I could ever do. There is nothing, nothing that compares to the blood. That song, there is nothing. There is nothing that compares to his goodness, his mercy, his love for us and his love for the father, because that's why he did it. So we could all come home to Papa. That's all I got to say. There we go. That was a mic drop. They're gold, he likes uh, that one. He likes that when one. When it explodes, it's all gold. That's glory. Yeah, yeah. No, glory. I wish everybody, uh, right, I want to wish everybody a happy Resurrection Day. We can. And, you know, mm -hmm. like you're kind of doing it. It's kind of like saying, okay, Sunday is when we're going to have a personal encounter with the Lord. Yes. Like Mary did on the day she went and beheld him. Yes. And he's going to say, don't hold on to me yet. Don't hold me. Don't try to keep me in a lower place. Oh. Don't try to keep me. Let me go back and sit where I can be the intercept. I can be the uh, the mediator between you and Papa yeah. when you're going through things. Let me go and take my place. And you go with that confidence of knowing that if I live, you live also. If I, you know, you know the song. Yeah. So anyway. So bless y'all. Have a great, bless y'all. Have a great and wonderful resurrection day. Just meditate on the fact that there's no reason to stay at the tomb. Get up off the bench in front of that tomb and just get up and go on and do what he's told you to do. Come if on. nothing more, just walk with him. He'll take you where you need to go. He knows, um, he knows where you're going. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And I'll show you how to get there and get back in the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Okay, amen. Mama, you want to pray us out? I will. Uh -huh. Okay. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you so much for your passionate love for us. Help us, Father, to expand our hearts to receive more of you and let you be enthroned on our heart instead of other things, being distracted or whatever. I thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the good news that you came to bring us, that we're free from sin. We're free from this death. We're free from unrighteousness. We're free from ungodly judgment. We're free indeed in you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for everything you did to provide that for us and i thank you lord jesus that even through that even though we sit and we've meditated and we tried to walk the via dolorosa with you this much as as much as we know how this week to understand what you went through the way of suffering that you travel lord we just ask you to to forgive us for the ways that we don't understand and that we've placed ourselves in front of what you want and what you died for us to have but as much as we've tried to understand it, Lord Jesus, there's no way possible that we can understand what it felt like for you to feel like the Father had turned his face from you. Because in that, that means there was no light. And I thank you 
for submitting and, com and dismissing and committing your spirit to the Father from which you came so that we could have life abundantly and be taught and led and guided through the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being my very best friend. I love you, and I thank you for all the lessons, all the, the guidance, all the joy. I thank you, Father God, Lord Jesus, and Holy Spirit, three in one. I thank you for the suffering and the joy. I thank you for the glory that's being revealed in all of us right now, not just when we get to heaven, but right now. I thank you for that. I thank you for every time we get to see your glory and your love and your truth revealed. I pray over everyone today, Lord. We, we wish everyone a true resurrection weekend, a true resurrection in some areas of our lives, Lord, that maybe have been dead or lying there dormant. We speak life to you. We speak resurrection life to you in every area that needs fresh breath, the fresh breath of God on you, that the Holy Spirit would blow through and blow away the chaff and the ashes of things that are lying there because they're dead and they need to go away. That debris needs to leave so the new can come. The old is gone. The new has come. Lord, remind us that each day we're a new creation in you. And I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the resurrection, the resurrection life, the resurrection power that we get to walk in even today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, what a supernatural thing you did for us and for everyone who believe in you and for the whole world. Because I know, Father, your heart is for everyone to be saved. You don't want anyone to perish. That's your word. No one to perish, that we would all come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, with all of our heart, as much as we can, the best way we know how, for your awesome, wonderful, terrible sacrifice for us and for the life and the glory that it brings even now. Teach us, Father, to live an ascended life now so that we are very much at home with you, whether we feel ourselves in the spirit or in the flesh, as Paul said. We don't know. We just know we're with you. So I pray a blessing over each one today and this entire weekend and beyond because it is the new year. This is the new year. This is the new year for us. It's a new start, a new beginning. It's a resurrection. It's a resurrection of a lot of things in a lot of people's lives. I release healing over <coughs> those who need it in their bodies. Um, I'm going to say what I hear in their bank accounts, in their relationships. <laughs> release healing in every area Lord because there's no area of our life that you don't know about that you can't touch and redeem and resurrect so I mm -hmm. thank you for that Lord we bless Lisa and this platform you've given her we pray increase 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 according to your plan we bless all of those that join her faithfully Lord and, and her faithfulness I just want to bless her faithfulness and thank you for that God I bless you Lord for Lisa and for her faithfulness to you and to us and everything you've called her to do. Um, I thank you for all these, these uh, family of friends and sons and daughters and, and people that we just love and are close to. I bless them. I bless them with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, with an expansion of the reality of your passionate love for us so that it can flow not only from you to us, but from us to everyone we encounter. Now, I pray peace into every household. I bind the spirit of chaos, confusion away from you. I say you have to go to the feet of Christ as the peace of God that surpasses all understanding comes into your house, your sphere of influence, into your heart, into everything that you say and do. And we just thank you, God, that we get to walk in your perfect peace because our minds are fixed on you. And I thank you for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was so good. Well, thank you guys so much for, for coming on. This has been, for some people, this is the first time that they actually really heard the good news. They actually heard about the good Friday that brought the good news. So thank you guys so much. Um, also, if you guys are interested, I've been putting it down there. But if you want to go to uh, to Robin's Venmo account, you can drop a little something, something, little resurrection blessing. Um, into her bank account. You can just uh, sow a seed because uh, that's what we're supposed to do when we get a good teaching, when we get a good preaching, where we're supposed to bless where we get fed. So if you guys are interested, you can go over to her Venmo account at robin-fields-14. Remember, she does have a love language that is 50s. So you can... <laughs> 
<laughs> you can go over there and, and drop a little something. I just bless each and every one of you. I just want you when you guys gather um, with your friends or your family, I just ask you just to reflect that it was because of Jesus that we're celebrating that day, that we have been resurrected with him, that in him and through him, all things are possible. And we are just so, we are so, so grateful for what he does. And he is just going to keep on doing. You guys have That's seen right. nothing. You have seen nothing yet because I am telling you, expect some big kabooms because God's about to move and he's about to move mightily and he will move in your life as well as the people that you see. So just keep praying, keep believing, keep pursuing because he's worth it. Have a fantastic weekend. God bless. I will see you guys on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.